I'm joined right now by Dr. Kenneth Polanski, who is the chair, Symposium Global Partnership to Accelerate Diabetes Research. Thank you, Doctor, so much for being here. This is truly, I think, one of the big plagues of our time. So many more people being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So you have this partnership, accelerating research, which is so critical. What are some of the findings that I think would help not only people who treat those with diabetes, but those who are being diagnosed with the disease? Well, the specific findings that we're going to be discussing uh, later today relate to the mechanisms of type 2 diabetes. Why do people develop type 2 diabetes? And uh, there was this uh, conference which was jointly organized by the Endocrine Society and the American Diabetes uh, Association to look at one aspect of this, which is the role of the pancreatic beta cell. And they assembled a group of experts from all over the world, uh, and there was a two-day conference in which there were many presentations, a lot of discussions, uh, and then a, a consensus paper was uh, prepared and is going to be published jointly in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism and Diabetes. And uh, the conference reaffirmed that the inability to produce enough insulin is absolutely central to the development of type 2 diabetes. And they also identified a number of areas uh, of what we think will be fruitful investigation to try and lead to novel approaches uh, to the prevention and treatment of type 2 diabetes. Uh, these include uh, additional research to identify genes for diabetes. Some of the diabetes genes have been identified, but actually a small proportion. Another very interesting uh, avenue is that it's now been well shown that bariatric surgery, so surgery that leads to weight loss, has a very, very beneficial effect on uh, reducing blood sugar and ameliorating diabetes. Extremely effective. So one of the recommendations is that we understand the mechanisms of that and that in doing so there may be novel uh, new approaches. Uh, so there are a number of very interesting uh, avenues for research that are outlined in the proceedings of this conference. Because when we think about the underlying causes of this beta cell failure, I think that will help us move forward to give recommendations to people to avoid it or to manage it. Right. Well, absolutely. And, you know, basically what uh, was reaffirmed is that the beta cell failure is a combination of genetic predisposition. It's a combination of a variety of complicated uh, metabolic and biochemical abnormalities in the pancreatic beta cell and it's very intimately tied up with environment. So we know well that people who are overweight, uh, who are sedentary, who have a lot of uh, high, high amount of fat in their diets, are much more likely to develop uh, type 2 diabetes than people who don't. And in substantial measure, not exclusively, uh, it's due to failure of the beta cell. Obviously, it's due to insulin resistance as well, so it's those two processes. And uh, the conference is now focused much more sharply on the specific events uh, that uh, could be fruitful uh, objects of study that will lead to new approaches and new treatments. When you talk about bariatric surgery mitigating some of the type 2 diabetes, what about simply losing weight for people if they're doing it on their own? Oh yeah, no one is suggesting that it wouldn't be better to lose weight on your own than to have bariatric surgery. I think everybody would agree with that. I think the difficulty, as you know, is that it's been very difficult for humans in the 21st century to lose a significant amount of weight and to keep it off uh, for a significant period of time. The studies actually uh, demonstrate that you don't need to get down to ideal body weight. If you just lose 5 to 10 percent of your starting weight, even though you are markedly overweight, and you uh, exercise, you reduce your calories, you lose 5 to 10 percent of uh, weight, that has a substantial beneficial effect on both preventing diabetes and on improving diabetic control. So that's the good news. The bad news is that even that amount of weight loss consistently and in a durable fashion over time has been more than most of us have been able to do. But a little bit easier recommendation, I think, for patients. Right. This is such critical information, the growing problem of obesity and type 2 diabetes. So thank you so much for all the work you're doing in the research, Doctor. Thanks.